So in this video we're going to do some more advanced stuff with expressions. Um, I'm going to uh, remove all of the default fields from this contact just here. And the reason why is because, I'll just keep it really simple, I'm going to add a field. So I've clicked the contact here and I'm clicking add field. I'm going to add a basic text field. And I'm just going to uh, write please type your age. And the data type I'm going to change to a whole number, an integer, and we're going to make that a minimum answer is one, which means they have to provide an answer. It's basically going to make that field required, and I can put in a minimum amount as well if I wanted to. So I can say like, uh, you have to be at least four and a maximum of 120 years old, and that means if we put in two, it'll tell us that we have to be over a certain age. And let's reset the form there. Um, and now that we've got our first name, last name, and our age, uh, I also want to make sure that this field is actually on the con inside the contact, so that this field is in here. Um, the reason for that is that if it was outside, the age field would be on the form, but not on the contact, and we actually want the age on the contact, just in case we say that you can have three or four contacts. Um, like let's say you can have multiple contacts. We actually want the age field on each of those contacts. So just make sure that it's it's in there, not like what I did. Um, and get to be dyslexic with my mouse here. Um, and now what we also want to do is add another field, which is just going to be a basic text field. I'm going to call this my date of birth, and I'm going to leave it as just text. And the key here, so just in light grey, there's a little key. We have to make sure that this key is DOB. That's the uh, date of birth key for a contact in Fluoro in the database. And what I'm going to do is uh, go to expressions and we're going to use a JavaScript library called Moment that we include in Fluoro that really helps with uh, managing dates. And I'm going to, I can get to the, the documents of that, momentjs.com. It'll give you all kinds of documentation about how to use that function. But I want to use moment back here in my set value to expression. I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to change it to moment subtract, and we're going to subtract years. And here I'm just going to click this bullseye, choose the please type your age field, and that's outside of here. But basically, we want to subtract whatever number they type in here that many years. So if I type in 20, you'll see that the date of birth changes to 2001. If I type in 30, 1999, 33, 1998, and so on and so forth. So that's all cool. We're, we're getting the date of birth after they type in their age. That's fantastic. Now what I want to do is click that field, and I'm going to change it from an input type. We don't actually want this text field here. We want to change that to a hidden value. Uh, just down here, change the hidden value so the user doesn't even see it. So the data is there, but the user doesn't see it. So if we click up here where it says ready for input, we can change the view mode to show the data model. And you'll see if we reset the form, you'll see here we've got uh, um, a moment object for our date of birth. So my expression needs to change a little bit. I just need to add. Uh, to date on the end of it. There we go, there's my there's my date of birth there. And if I type in 22, you'll see that it's actually changing this value. I can type in Tom, Tom test. And this is the data model that's actually gonna be sent through to the back end when someone fills in the form. You can check that out by clicking up here and clicking show the data model, just so you can see that it's, it's actually working and it's all correct but the user doesn't actually see this field. That's how you use that hidden value field. And what's also important is, because we don't actually know the contact specific birthday, um, I'm also gonna add another field, and this is going to be uh, the date of birth is verified. And just here where it's uh, got the key, we need to make sure, this is really important, we need to make sure that this is DOB verified. And that's a key in Fluoro to tell us, uh, basically it just informs you that the, the contact's date of birth that's stored is actually correct, it's actually their birthday. 
um, versus just a guess. And we're just actually yeah, just guessing that their birthday is, you know, today. Because if they're 22 today, we know at least at this date they're 22. They're at least born around about this year. So um, I'm going to change the data type to a Boolean. And you'll see it's a checkbox that's unticked. And if I tick that, it says true. If I untick it, it says false. But if I reset the form, you'll see by default there's just no there's no value there because there's no value until you actually click the tick, tick box. So down in the default value, I just want to type out the word false. And I want to make sure that from the get-go, that's always false. And I want to hide this value as well. So I'm going to go up here where it says input type, change to a hidden value. So uh, if you followed along this far, basically we've got a contact and you can type in the name and you can type in the age and as the age changes, it's changing this hidden value of DOB to a date that is however many years we've typed in uh, subtracted from the current date and we're also passing through an explicit date of birth verified is false. Now if we just save this as a form and we'll get our form here, we'll click our public link and if we fill in our form 45 and we hit submit, uh, if we go to our form submissions over here you'll see that it's created our Tom Loki and if we open this person up it has uh, his birthday and his age but the I've done it on the wrong server um, because we've just added the date of birth verified option but here where it says it's correct it will actually set that as it's a guess because of our dog verified field so if I hit save now and then I open up his profile here it'll say he's 45 years with an estimated age so we don't actually know his birthday but we know that he's 45 and next year at, a, at the same date he'll be 46 so it'll keep him in the same uh, and correct age group but uh, we won't be triggering any like birthday messages or anything like that um, and so the age will be roughly a fairly decent guess that he's around about 45 some parts sometimes of the year he might be a year off and sometimes of the year uh, he might be um, it might be correct, but that's essentially how Fluoro will keep the ages moving without actually knowing a person's date of birth.